James Cooper joins us to bring us all the latest on United's transfer dealings. James, we brought the news yesterday that there was a potential breakthrough in their attempts to sign Jadon Sancho. What's the new development today? Yeah, there was progress. There's no doubt about that because one of the two major obstacles were the agent's fees and also the salary the player's demanding. So I think there is progress on that. I don't think they've been sorted or solved as yet, but certainly progress It's heading in the right direction. But I think what we've got today is, is a signpost, if you like, that, that there needs to be some levity here. And what that levity is that you know, Manchester United want to pay a realistic fee for Jadon Sancho to Borussia Dortmund, bearing in mind the situation with COVID, bearing in mind that the phrase I've used all summer, the money will only stretch so many ways. And I don't think they feel that the valuation of 108 million euros is a realistic fee. So something has to give there. They want the player. They believe the player wants to come to Old Trafford. But I think, you know, if it gets to the kind of situation where nothing's happening, where it's stalled again, I think they will look at other options. They have a short list that's been prepared by their recruitment team at Old Trafford to fulfil that position that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer thinks is a really important one. Look, he's trying to get an impression on the Champions League, his first season in the Champions League as, as a manager at Manchester United, also to improve on a third-place finish in the Premier League. And he wants more goals and he wants more assists and he wants more creativity and pace from that wide right position. He thinks that Jadon Sancho can do that. He is the number one target for Manchester United, but I think there's only so much they'll do to wait. And, and they won't be afraid mark my words, to walk away from this one, sign somewhere else and maybe forget Jadon Sancho completely. We're a long, long way away from that, I've got to say. But United are prepared to walk away and, and do something else if they can't make some headway on what they consider to be realistic, uh, unrealistic, sorry, transfer expectations when it comes to Borussia Dortmund. So, yeah, progress, but another major hurdle for this deal to overcome in a, in a deal that seems to have so many hurdles. James, I have to ask you a quick question. If, if the Jadon Sancho deal doesn't work out, which is obviously plan A, what are the alternatives that Man United do have? It's, it's a really good question. It's one that's speculated upon by a lot of Manchester United fans at the moment. If I take you back a few weeks and talk about when they were exploring other opportunities with the likes of Kingsley Coman with a potential loan deal from Bayern Munich for that, I think that gives you an idea of what they're trying to look for. You know, they want more goals from the front three. They scored 66 in the Premier League as a team. They want more. They want to close the gap on Liverpool and Manchester City. They want more assists and creativity to allow the likes of Martial and Rashford to score even more goals. And who knows, Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba as well. So it's about finding that that pace, that experience and that class, that doesn't come cheap and we're seeing that at the moment with Jadon Sancho and I think that's what you're looking for and, and maybe they could just do perhaps a loan deal that carries them through for a season and then we're going to revisit this with Jadon Sancho next summer when of course there's only one year left on his deal and, and maybe the prices have changed but the risk then is there are more clubs would want to sign Jadon Sancho than just Manchester United at the moment, it's pretty much exclusively their deal to do. James, that's the front line. What about in the defence? Chris Smalling's move to Roma still hasn't been finalised yet. Uh, what's the latest for that deal? In terms of where that deal is, it's stalling. There's no doubt about that. There's negotiations between Roma and there is between Manchester United. And I think that so far, Roma haven't offered a fee that, again, Manchester United considered to be realistic for Chris Smalling. What has happened is that Chris Smalling was brought back into the camp for pre-season training by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And certainly the messages and smoke signals I was getting is that there would be a chance for him to kind of be reintegrated and maybe perhaps potentially be an option for Manchester United next season. At the moment, though, there seems to be a major impasse. Chris Smalling is training on his own at Carrington, uh, not training with the rest of the first-team squad. So you can't really see a situation where he'd kind of be let back in to be that alternative for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I mean, things change. He's got two years left on his contract. Now, it's made, been made very, very clear to me by people at Manchester United that, you know, agitation on the part of the players or player power, call it what you like, it won't stop Manchester United from seeking what they believe to be a realistic fee from Roma or any club that wants to buy Chris Smalling. At the moment, no one's come close to what Manchester United want for that defender. So, you know, again, a bit of an impasse. He wants to play first-team football and a lot of it having made a really good impression in Italy but unless Manchester United get the fee they're looking for then I guess it's a case of Chris Smalling remaining in Manchester and looking pretty unhappily at doing that at the moment. James thank you. Right let's talk about Jaden Sancho there and, and Manchester United in general. A couple of tweets have come in already while James Cooper was talking there. Jamie says I wish that we Manchester United can hurry up and get the important deals done especially Sancho and Ben Yates actually suggests uh, maybe Manchester United should put in a bid for David Brooks from Bournemouth. Right, uh, JD, is there any need for, for real urgency with this Jaden Sancho deal? I mean, there hasn't been any so far. I think what I've 
kind of gathered and great work again by James. I mean, he's always the inside man when it comes to Man United. But what I do actually understand and, and take from that is there is an element of urgency, Tom. I think there really is an element from a competitive sort of standpoint because there will be competitive pressure that's put on Manchester United, not just because they're one of the biggest clubs in the world, but they're looking at what their rivals are doing. You look at Manchester City, they did their business very early. Ferran Torres is in there already. Nathan Ake is in there already. And then Chelsea, we've already seen the way they're attacking the market, bringing in everybody. It looks like Christmas right now in West London. So they would naturally look at the team that finished below them, look at the team that finished above them and thinking, how can we close that gap to Manchester City if we don't improve that squad? And you can clearly see the right side of that attack or just improving their attacking line in general is clearly somewhere they've targeted. The, the current options that they've got in attack, Anton, though, are, are still uh, fairly good, to say the least. Not bad, <laughs> is it? It's not bad. And James alluded to the number of goals that came from Manchester United forwards last season from Greenwood. Rashford and Martial. That's a pretty potent front three, but it's interesting when you talk to Manchester United fans, when you speak to people around the game about what happens when, those, when one or two or three of those players can't play. It's, who's next? It's, it's Dan James, it's Odi Nogalo, and it's, and it's players from the, uh, from the academy. And it's, you know, th those, those players in flashes, in James and Nogalo, proved that they can do a job in the Premier League and the Europa League last season, but clearly Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to take that next step. In terms of who else is on the, the short list, it, James said it's been speculated about K Kingsley Coman on that list as well if they don't get Jaden Sancho. I quite like Kinsley Coleman. I've watched him from, from different angles because you look at the trophy cabinet, first of all, and you look at a player's accolades and he's pretty much won everything apart from I think he's only got a World Cup pretty much to add to his sort of collection so far. But then at the same time, there's a lot of question marks. People say, well, how much did you contribute? How much did you turn around and say with the Serie A title, with the Bundesliga? But I always say that. To be part of a championship team, you have to have contributed something. To pick up a medal, you have to have contributed something. And if you're questioning a man's contribution, just look at the Champions League final from last year. That's enough of a contribution in its own.